This video is brought to you by Granger Motors, where you can save up to $1,300 on a factory extended warranty on your new Ford or Ram Jeep Chrysler vehicle. Hey everybody, we got a great video for you today because we're talking about what the heck is going on at Jeep. So we've got some rather weird news about the new 2025 Wrangler. We're also talking about some crazy management shifts that are happening at Stellantis and what is going on at this company. Yeah, you know, Jeep uh, is one of the brands that's near and dear to our heart. Uh, we have owned a lot of Jeeps. Uh, we love off-roading. And so uh, we are a little worried about the brand uh, because, well, they seem to be in a lot of turmoil right now, Tommy. They really do. Yeah, they're struggling with sales. Things are just not looking good for Stellantis overall. We've talked about this before, and we're going to continue to talk about it because some of the decisions that Jeep is making for the 2025 Wrangler are kind of a head scratcher. So let's talk about Stellantis, Dad. So Stellantis took over from FCA a number of years ago, and during that FCA period, um, Jeep, Ram, Dodge, they were all doing pretty well, right? We had a lot of good products. We had relatively reasonable prices and uh, sales were looking good. But recently, since Stellantis took over, things have not been looking so good. Some of the decisions they've made have been head scratchers. A lot of product is aging. And for 2025, the Wrangler has some rather befuddling changes. Should we start with that then? Yeah, I mean, let me give you my little bit of perspective on this. Okay. I always worry when a European brand like Peugeot uh, basically um, merges or takes over an American brand, especially the French, because I think the French have a long record of not understanding, and <laughs> Europeans in general, the American market, because it is so different than what is happening in Europe. And a lot of that has to do with just the geography of America versus the geography of Europe. We have a lot of open land. We have a lot of places especially here in the West, where you can go and off-road. I have been to many countries in Europe, Tommy, and I have yet to find a lot of off-roading there. Let me take a minute to tell you about this video's sponsor, Granger Motors, and their extended factory warranties for new vehicles. Today, more than ever, an extended factory warranty is a worthwhile consideration. The new cars and trucks coming out pack more amazing, yet unproven, tech and complexity than ever. Knowing this, an extended factory warranty buys you peace of mind. If something goes wrong, you're covered for repairs and parts for years after the original warranty expires. A factory-backed warranty means repairs are done by factory-trained technicians who know your vehicle inside and out and are trained to repair known problems. A factory-backed warranty ensures that your car or truck gets replaced with true factory parts and in some cases upgraded factory parts to fix those known issues. So next time you buy a new Ford or Ram, Jeep, Dodge or Chrysler vehicle, go to Granger Motors for an extended factory warranty. Granger is the number one seller of Ford Protect warranties and one of the top sellers of Mopar vehicle protection warranties in the country. This volume lets their customers save an average of $1,300. So what are you waiting for? That's exactly right. And for the most part, after talking to some insiders, especially the French, simply do not understand the American love of four-wheel drive and off-road culture. It is something that especially French management has such a hard time grasping. And this is something so crucial to the Jeep brand because I think what happens a lot of the time is these folks overseas look at the statistics and they see that on paper only a small percentage of Jeep buyers actually take their Jeep off-road. So they do the rational thing on paper and that is to limit the availability of off-road options and features, make the vehicles more roadworthy. But especially with Jeep, people buy Wranglers for the off-road trips they never take but it's crucial to the Wrangler buyer and the Jeep buyer that their products can still handle the tough stuff. And the French really seem to have a hard time with this. Yeah, I completely agree. So uh, let's talk about some of the changes that we've seen that you know don't bode well for the brand. Well, um, so if we look at the Wrangler, right? Let's talk about some of these, the 2025 differences. Um, huge lineup of engine options, right? We know that 392 is going away because they've had Several final editions now. The final <laughs> editions are never really the final editions. There's always another final edition. But that's going away. And it really seems like they're phasing out their workhorse engine for 2025. So for the last 12, 13 years, the venerable 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 has been the go-to engine of choice for Wranglers across the globe. I'm going to make a prediction. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a bold prediction. So for the longest time for the Jeep brand, the 4 liter was kind of the gold standard. Uh, it was in the Wrangler, it was in the Cherokee, and it was the engine that you wanted because it was 
um, one of the 10 best engines ever built in terms of reliability. But my bold prediction is that the Pentastar six-cylinder V6 is going to go into the pantheon of great engines because, you know, Stellantis has put it in everything over the years, including FCA, and that engine just keeps on trucking. Uh, and uh, it may not be the most fuel efficient, it may not be the most powerful, but it is certainly one that has proved its long-term reliability. I think that's a little bold. Right, well, I'm, They're not that good. They're the rush of engines. It's a fine band, but it's no one's favorite. All right, it's fine. I, I, it, but it's in my opinion, it's the best engine in the Wrangler lineup. Um, because to your credit, it has proven itself more or less reliable. They do have some problems with like oil filter housings and early cam problems. But they are generally very long lasting, fairly efficient, fairly powerful. But what they've done for 2025 is they've eliminated the automatic option with that 3.6 V6. So the only way now to get the Pentastars with a manual transmission, and this is a big problem in my opinion, because manual transmission take rates, even on Wranglers, are pretty small. And they're really trying to phase this engine out is what it feels like to me, forcing people to get the two liter turbo now if they want the automatic. Yeah, and I gotta tell you, Tommy, I'm not in love with that two liter turbo. I know it's the only option you can get if you want the four by E, which is you know the one that of course is now being heavily pushed because you can get the government discounts on it. Uh, but it's not my favorite engine. It doesn't seem to pair well with the Wrangler. It's a little peaky. And what I mean by that is they have a lot of in my opinions, a lot of kind of peaks of torque that come in suddenly and not super linear, and then they sound really poor. They, they do sound like Dysons. They've got this weird kind of hum about them, and then this, this not turbo sound, but this kind of whine. Don't like the way they sound. So in my opinion, 3.6 is still the best engine in the Wrangler lineup, other than the 392, which is going away. Yeah, and in Europe, for a while there, the 2-liter turbo was in everything. Every Mercedes, every BMW, it just became the engine to go to, and in a lot of ways it still is. Uh, and of course, that is now being replaced by a straight six for many brands. Uh, of course, the Pentastar is a V6, it's not a straight six, but still, uh, it's not something that, like I said, goes well with a Wrangler. I think if you put it in the 4 by e the electrification of that vehicle kind of does tend to kind of even out the peaks in the power band of the 2-liter, uh, but still... Um, uh, yeah, we, we owned one, and I gotta say, I did not love it. Now, here's the pricing lineup. The Jeep actually hasn't gotten that much more expensive, which is good, um, especially when you consider the fact they got rid of the manual locks and the manual window option. So now it's all power options, and the base price is up about $100 or so, so not a huge bump. Um, for 2025. For 2025. I think now, Dad, America's finally lost the last vehicle sold in the U.S. with power, power windows and power locks. I think that's it. I don't I don't think there's any other vehicles. Someone in the comments let me know if there's any other cars for 2025 that have manual windows and manual locks. I think that the Wrangler was it. So what's what's the base Wrangler going to start at if you're looking at the very base base base? About 34. So when you bought yours, mm -hmm. you had the Willys. It was about 35. Was it about 35? Yeah. Okay. But that was a package up from but the th But this is a two-door. Yes. With uh, Steelys, basically. Yeah, about 34-ish. Okay, yeah. right. So, it, 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 and look, the problem with the previous model years, if you wanted that V6 with the automatic, it was a $4,500 upgrade, which is insane. Essentially $4,500 for a an automatic. automatic transmission, yeah. which is just crazy. So I, I still think that that should be an option in the Wrangler, especially on the base end of things. And then on the Gladiator side of things, they killed the manual in the, in the Gladiator, which I think was a bad choice. Um, and we have we do have a new color as well, but um, I well, just well I think it's a bad choice, especially now because there's been this resurgence in manuals. I was just looking at some of the uh, numbers on other brands, and did you know that, for instance, the WRX uh, the manual outsells uh, the automatic in that vehicle? Yeah, that makes sense. But that's a that's an enthusiast vehicle. It's probably but, the but, same. But so like is a, the Jeep. Yeah, but the Jeep is more of a mainstream vehicle. Um, you see a lot of folks just using it to commute to and from school. I don't know the exact take numbers on manual. Same thing with the BRZ outsells. Enthusiast vehicle. That's a sports car. I'm yeah. just I'm just saying. All of a sudden, people have woken up to the fact that you know if, if you don't save the manuals, it might be too late. And so right now there is a resurgence in manual love, and uh, it's a bad time to be going in the opposite direction. Well, you can still get one on the Wrangler. That's great. Still around. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about some other. Big, big, big news for Stellantis. So the latest news this week, this is on Automotive News. Um, the AP Press is that Stellantis 
is searching for a new CEO. Um, so Tavares, Carlos Tavares, uh, this is a quote from AP News, has been under fire from U.S. dealers and uh, the UAW after a dismal first half financial performance when the company was caught off guard with too much high price inventory on dealer lots. In a statement Monday, Stellantis said Tavares' five-year contract is a little over a year from its expiration date, quoting, it is normal for a board to look into the subject with the necessary anticipation given the importance of the position without this having an impact on future discussions. Well, look, I mean, Stellantis in America lost, I think, at least 2% market share. Uh, and when you lose 1% of market share, heads are going to roll. When you lose 2%, I'm surprised he's still at a job. Yeah. It's, it's just, a, you know, they, they went from, uh, you know, being one of the most uh, derived, especially on the RAM side, to over the years, you know, making the RAM one of the key uh, players in the truck market. Um, incredible interiors, especially innovative with trucks like the TRX. And then, you know, during COVID, prices went up. And then after COVID, uh, all of the other manufacturers that directly compete with, I'm talking about Ford and GM, you know, started putting cash on the hood. And for some mysterious reason, uh, the Stellantis, especially on the Ram side and on the Jeep side, just kept increasing prices, prices, prices. And, and the their, products didn't change. And the products the didn't change. And the dealers were like, how can we compete with the guys across the street? You know, we buy our uh, Jeeps uh, at uh, Johnson's Auto Plaza and right across the street from them is Brighton Ford where we buy our Fords. Uh, and th these guys are directly competing head to head. I mean, you know, car and truck buyers go to Johnson's and then they go to the Ford dealership. And, you know, it's pretty obvious to see if there's money on the hood at one versus the other. And that just really, uh, really got the dealership owners incensed. We've also seen a tremendous long more turnover we've seen in the in the past year or two years than we've seen in 15 years of doing this business of Stellantis C-suite execs just constant turnover so within the Jeep world yeah, well Mark Allen the designer so he left yeah he's been there forever yeah. a bunch of folks left shortly after Stellantis took over that was huge news yep. perhaps not unexpected but huge news um and then if we look at the Jeep brand right yep. the global brand we went from um, we, we had a CEO changeover from um, Moynier to um, Filosa, right? That was really big news. And then the Jeep brand in North America has just had constant changes. So we went from Jim Morrison to Bill Peffer, who's lasted nine months, to now a guy named Bob Broderdorf. Yeah, but he's been with uh, he's been with them a long time. For a long time. And now Peffer replaces Phil Langley as the head of the dealer network. Our Jeep. PR contacts are now completely different as well. So we're just seeing so much turnover and change in, uh, well, I, I, in this, I, I, this I company. Think the, I think the two most important people that left, and you know, we've been going to the Easter Jeep Safari, and so we got very close with the exec team over there. Uh, Jim, of course, uh, was there for a long time. He was, at, he was also at RAM for a long time. Uh, and between him and Mark Allen, they kind of held the DNA and they protected the brand from all the winds of change you know, that happened during the decades when the company just got tossed from, uh, in, you know, from Mercedes to uh, investment fund, uh, then to Fiat and now to Peugeot. And those guys just kind of held that brand DNA uh, separate from all those changes so that a Jeep is still a Jeep is still a Jeep. Uh, and I think, I think with those guys leaving, a lot of that uh, bulwark against the price cutting and cost cutting and whatever other ideas that the various management types at the top had has fallen away. And now we're seeing kind of a loss of sales because of it. So Bob, hopefully we'll stick around for a while. He's been senior vice I wish, president. Bob, I wish you luck, dude. Yep. Of Rand brand operations. Um, and before that he was head of Dodge sales operations since 2021. So he has a lot of experience with the company and I hope that he does the brand proud. Um, but yeah, it's, it is a little alarming just to see all the turnover going around at this company. And uh, we're just going to wait and see how this materializes. Yeah, and you know it's just a really bad time because um, specifically Jeep is facing a lot of headwinds. So when the Gladiator came out, it was kind of the darling of the dance. Uh, people really liked it, uh, but for some mysterious reason, Jeep would not admit that it's a Wrangler with a bed. And then this year, we finally got that admission that it's a Wrangler with a bed. Uh, but now the, the thing is just so expensive. You know, we were complaining about the cost of the new Toyota. Uh, Tacoma, especially the Trail Hunter, but the Gladiator still sits on top of that in terms of its pricing. And it's 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 a premium vehicle, and what Jeep will tell you as well, it's the only convertible truck. 
But then, you know, is there a huge demand for convertible trucks? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and the, um, the especially compared to like now that we've got Ranger Raptor in the segment, um, the At new fifty-seven thousand new Toyota Nissans are incredible deals with the Frontiers. The last Gladiator I drove was the Mojave, and that was sixty-eight thousand dollars. That's yeah. eleven thousand dollars more than a Ranger Raptor. Yeah, and it still has um, no plug-in hybrid option. It's coming supposedly, wh which yeah, insiders tell us is coming, but likely not till next year. So that's that. That would be a that would be an appeal that would allow us to get excited about the Gladiator yet again, right? Yeah, and we can't forget the elephant in the room, Tommy, and that is for the longest time, the Wrangler, which is, let's face it, the DNA, the heart of the brand of Jeep, right? Because it is the one that can trace its roots all the way back uh, to that old, you know, Willis or Willies, however you want to say it, that we've got sitting in the barn from World War II. But the problem is, now you've got a brand new Forerunner coming, which directly competes with the Wrangler, and Bronco has taken a huge market share uh, and Ford did it right, you know. They they came along and they had uh, vehicles that directly competed with the JL and made the JL, the latest Wrangler, look old in the process. And and Jeep has done very little to refresh it in the fight in this competition, right? What they did was they kind of changed the grill, they put a bigger screen on it, and they electrified the seats. Uh, but in terms of actually, you know, taking Bronco head on, I don't see a lot of a lot of innovation coming out of Jeep, uh, except for the 4xE, which of course, you know, is very innovative uh, and is the only, well, it's one of the only plug-in hybrids right now in America, actually, that, that's on the market that, that you know, that you can buy and go off-roading in. Well, folks, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Um, this has been a, an interesting discussion, and we'd love to hear your feedback. Head over to alttfl.com if you want to find more content, and head over to Patreon if you want early access and exclusive behind-the-scenes videos. You know, Tommy, I, I kind of feel like uh, we need a Jeep in our fleet. This, Maybe we will have one again soon. This makes me feel like we need to go back and get a Jeep uh, because uh, we have had uh, such a strong audience, you guys, uh, for our Jeep uh, content. And as much as I love... The World War II Jeep, uh, it's more of a classic than a modern convenience or conveyance. So uh, I think we're going to have to go do a little bit of uh, Wrangler shopping again. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Ciao.